page 13, number 62. Read it, come back. Okay, so the junior high school put on a showing of the Grease musical. Background information that we don't need, so cross it off. There were so many people from the community in attendance. Again, thank you, but nope, next. The school auditorium is 3,506 square feet. So this is the area of our school auditorium. The fire marshal did an inspection of the auditorium to make sure it wasn't too overcrowded and found the population density to be 0.1218 people per square foot. Remember, the number of people per, so divided by, number of square feet. Approximately how many people attended the show? So they want to figure out how many people. Now, this is a question about population density. So we've done a couple of those already. Now, population density, pop density, is the formula population, this, in this case, the number of people, so the population divided by square feet. In other words, the area of the land that you're looking at. So the area of the auditorium floor. So area. Now what they gave us, if we go back into the prompt, they gave us a couple of things. The first thing they gave us was 3,506 square feet. So what they gave us is the area. 3,506 feet squared. So we don't care what shape the auditorium is in because they've already told us the area. So they've done the work for us. Next, they also gave us the information for population density. So the actual pop density is 0.1218 people per square foot. So what we need to do is we need to plug this information into the formula so that we can solve for the population, the number of people. We're working backwards in this problem because they already solved for population density and we have to work backwards to figure out the number of people. So if I plug in my information I have for the population density 0.1218 equals the number of people which I'll call x over the area of the land. So 3,506 feet squared. To get x, we're going to multiply both sides by 3,506 so we can get x by itself. So 3,506 times 3,506, and we're going to use our calculator for that. So 3,506 times 0.1218 equals. So that gives us 427. 0308 equals x. Now, giving this answer, they want approximately how many people. We're not going to give a fraction of a person. That just doesn't make sense. So instead, we're going to give that the number of people there was approximately 427, rounded to the nearest whole person. So 427 people. Okay, let's move on. Number 63, determine the measure of each interior angle in triangle RKO and classify it by its angles and by its sides. So let's start by finding each interior angle in a triangle. Now we need to know this like the back of our hands. For any triangle, the interior angles will always, always, always add up to 180 degrees. That's something we learned at the beginning of the year. So let's go ahead and apply that triangle sum theorem to this problem by taking all three angles, adding them together, and setting them equal to 180. So we're going to write 5x plus 5 plus 11x minus 1 plus 3x plus 5 equals 180. Start by combining like terms. I'll start with the x's. 5x, 11x, and 3x. 5 
plus 11 is 16 plus 3, 19. So 19x plus 5 minus 3 is 4. And plus 5. Two fives together is 10 minus 1 is 9. So 19x plus 9 equals 180. Subtract 9 from both sides. 19x equals 171. Go to our calculator to get x by dividing both sides by 19. 171 divided by 19 is equal to 9. Nice whole number. Now, they're not asking me for x, they're asking me to find the measure of each interior angle. So what we have to do is we have to plug this back in to each one of the angles. So we have, for the first one, 5 times 9 plus 5. 5 times 9 plus 5. 50 degrees. Next one, 11 times 9 minus 1. 11 times 9 minus 1, 98. Okay, so this is an obtuse angle. Lastly, 3 times 9 plus 5, 32. And you want to check that you did your math correct by adding together all three angles just to make sure they equal 180. So 32 plus 98 plus 50 gives me 180. Okay, so I did my math correct. Now let's put into our first piece of the question here the measure of each angle. So it's 50 degrees, angle K is 98, and then angle O is 32. Now they're asking me for the side classification. Now I don't know the measure of each side length. However, since I see that all three angles are different measurements, that means that all three side lengths will be different as well. I don't have to know what the lengths are to be able to decide that it's going to be a scalene triangle since all the angles are different measures as well. So scalene is my side classification. The other options were isosceles and equilateral. Isosceles means two sides would be the same. That would require the two angles were the same. And equilateral means that all the angles are equal. 60 degrees would be the measure of each angle, and they're not. Angle classifications. We're looking at acute, obtuse, or right. For it to be a right triangle, you have to have a 90 degree angle, which we don't. For it to be an acute triangle, all three angles would have to be acute, meaning less than 90. But we have one that's larger than 90. We have a 98 degree angle. So it's not going to be acute. Instead, it's going to be obtuse because you have a 98 degree angle, which is an obtuse angle. Okay, an obtuse angle is anything larger than 90 degrees but less than 180. So our angle classification is obtuse. So this would be a scalene obtuse triangle, if I were to call it by its full name, first and last name, as I got in trouble. Okay, let's move on to number 64. Number 64. Use a diagram below to answer the following questions. Part A. Is triangle ABC a right triangle? Justify your work with a sentence supported by work. Okay. Now, the question is, is it a right triangle? Now, we have two different methods to figure out if it's a right triangle. One of the methods is by using slope. We check to see if any of the lines have perpendicular slopes, which means they form a right angle when they cross. The other method is by using the Pythagorean theorem converse. C squared box A squared plus B squared. These are our two options. Now, I'm going to go ahead and use slope as my method to check if there's a right angle, which would mean there's a right triangle. Now, if I look at the diagram, it looks like only angle C may be a right angle. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to check the slope of the two sides that make up angle C. So let me go ahead and zoom in so I could focus. 
Now my two side lengths are AC and the other side length is CB that make up my angle. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to check their slopes and I'm going to see if they're perpendicular. So the way that I find the slopes, I'm going to use rise over run. I'm not going to do the slope formula. If I have a graph, it's much easier to use rise over run. AC is clearly a negatively sloped line because it's going down from left to right. Now I'm going down, let me go ahead and count. I'm going down one, two boxes, and I'm going to the right, one, two, three, four, five boxes to the right. So down two, negative two, and to the right five. I can't simplify that any further. Two and five do not have a common factor. So let me go ahead and find the slope of BC or CB. Same thing. Now, starting at C, I always like to start at the point on the left. I notice this is a positively sloped line, so I'm going to put down the positive. And starting at C, I'm going to count up for my rise. So for my rise, I'm going one, two, three, four, so up four, and then to the right, one, two. So I'm going to go ahead and write down that my slope is positive four over two, which if I simplify this, I can divide top and bottom by two, I'm going to get two over one, or just two. Now, a slope of two and a slope of negative two over five are not perpendicular. So these are not perpendicular, meaning angle C is not a right angle. So for the first question, part A, there is no right triangle pictured here. So let me zoom out. Let me put a sentence. And let me say that ABC is not a right triangle because none of the sides are perpendicular. So triangle ABC is not a right triangle because none of the sides are perpendicular. And you could even talk further about how you use slope in order to determine that they're not perpendicular. Okay, let's go on to part B. Part B, classify the triangle by sides and by angles. Justify your work by showing the length of each side and applying the Pythagorean theorem converse. So it's already telling us how we should do this. We should do the Pythagorean theorem converse, which was the C squared box A squared plus B squared. Now in order to figure out if it's isosceles or if it's um, equilateral or scalene, I need to know the side lengths because I definitely can't get the angle measures, but I can get the side lengths from a graph. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to clear off my graph a little bit so I can start by solving for each of the different side lengths. Let me zoom in. And remember how we find side lengths when we're on a graph. We're going to use Pythagorean theorem. So let's start with AC. If you remember what we did, we counted down and over. And by finding slope, you're also figuring out the lengths that you're going to use with the Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to use the 2 and the 5 to figure out the length of AC. So 2 squared plus 5 squared equals AC squared. 2 squared is 4 plus 5 squared, which is 25. So 4 plus 25 is 29. Square root that to get the length of AC. So I'm skipping some steps here because we've done the Pythagorean theorem so much now that you should be having the hang of it. All right, let's move on to CB. So CB, again, we found when we did our slope, but I'm going to draw my triangle on the outside now. So it's going to be 2 over and 4 up. So I'm going to use 2 and 4 with my Pythagorean theorem. So 2 squared plus 4 squared equals CB squared. 
2 squared is 4, plus 4 squared, which is 16. 4 plus 16 is 20. So square root of 20 is going to give me the length of CB. Lastly, I need to go ahead and get AB, which I haven't done yet. So starting at A, I'm counting up 2, and I'm counting to the right 7 boxes. So I'm going to use 2 and 7 to find the length of AB. So lastly, AB. I don't have a lot of room here. I'm going to try and make this fit. So I'm going to do 2 squared plus 7 squared equals AB squared. So 4 plus 49 is 53. Square rooted is the length of AB. Now let's take a look at all three side lengths and decide what type of triangle this is according to the side lengths. Since all three side lengths are different, we have square root of 29, square root of 20, and square root of 53. Since they're all different, that means that this is a scalene triangle, just like the last one. So scalene. Now, to figure out what type of triangle it is, we know it's not right because of part A, but now we need to determine if it's acute or if it's obtuse. And the way that we do that is by using our Pythagorean theorem converse. So we're going to start setting up our converse. And the way we do that is we write down c squared box a squared plus b squared. And c is your longest side length. Since all three of these sides are expressed as square roots, as radicals, I can tell that the largest number, even after I take the square root, is going to be the length of AB, which is going to be the largest number. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plug in that C is my square root of 53. And don't forget to square it. Then I'm going to put the box. A and B are the other two side lengths. It doesn't matter which one you call A and which one you call B. So I'll say square root of 29 squared plus the square root of 20 squared. Now I'm going to go ahead and figure out what relationship that square root of 53 squared has with the other two sides. Now you should note when you square a square root, since those are inverse operations, they cancel each other out. So you're just left with 53, which makes me happy that I didn't put the square root of 53 and all the others in the calculator and get all these decimals, these ugly decimals that I didn't want to work with. Going to put a box, square and square root cancel, square root and square again cancel. So I'm going to have 29 plus 20. Now 53 box, 29 plus 20 is 49. So, we're going to use an inequality symbol. 53 is larger than 49. It's greater than 49. When your c squared is greater than a squared plus b squared, the way it is here, that means it's obtuse. If it turned out that c squared was less than a squared plus b squared, this would be acute. But in this case, c squared was larger. So that means this is an obtuse triangle. I don't know what the measurements are for each of the angles, but I do know that one of them is going to be obtuse. It's going to be larger than 90. So my final answer here is going to be obtuse for my angle classification. This is an obtuse scalene triangle, just like the last problem, number 63. Okay. We are done with page 13.